We're excited for this. I love that you have the panda Dude. and the office looks fantastic. <laughs> Dude, we got to have a man. We got to have the little guy. Oh, so cute. I, I have mine somewhere around here, I think. Uh, but uh, what's up, guys? Uh, welcome to another interview, uh, uh, the Seven Figure Sales Talk. Uh, we have an extra special guest here, uh, Alex Moscow. He's one of my mentors. Um, mm -hmm. If you want to learn about live events, how to sell at live events, all that good stuff, Alex is the master with over 10 years of experience, uh, and he's done over 178 events. Uh, he helped me set up my masterminds last year, helped me set up Tribe Buyers Live, uh, where we did uh, six figures at all of our events last year, and then seven figures at Tribe Buyers Live, and a lot of that uh, credit has to go to uh, Alex Moscow here. So Alex, brother, thank you so much, and uh, thanks for being here. Thanks, man. I am excited. I feel like this is going to be a really good one. So excited to be on and uh, excited to uh, definitely jam on the event side of things. It's been super impactful for me in my life. And I know just even just seeing uh, you and your business and what it's done for your team and everything. It's just been it's it, it's 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 why I do what I do. It's one of my favorite things. So excited mm -hmm. to jam. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> adding it to my business model has just taken my business to another level. Um, and it all started at uh, Congruent Coach Live, which was one of the best events that uh, I attended. I think you had like 130 people there mm -hmm. in March of 2019. 19. Mm -hmm. And that's where I signed up for your program. Um, but besides that, I'd love to jump into your experience, how you got into events and kind of the evolution of your entrepreneur career. Totally. So I... Uh was always into creating experiences for people. Like it's when I really think back, like I love to do it. And I've, if you don't know me, don't know my story, I've had a challenge with a stutter for most of my life. And so even though I had that challenge, like really communicating and connect with people, I would throw parties to where rather than like me going out and talking to people, uh, more of a cold traffic approach, I would create parties where people would come and talk to me. So it's more of like a warm traffic approach, right? Uh, since we're talking about marketing here. So that's how I got started into like just creating experiences. And it, was, it wasn't like events, I was like throwing parties, you know? So I was throwing parties and it was great. And then um, at 19 years old, um, it's May, May 6th, 2008, right after Cinco de Mayo, huge party at my fraternity, um, you know, 5.38 in the morning, my window shatters and I'm woken out of my like haze after 15 drinks that night with assault rifles in my face. And four big dudes, big black uh, SWAT gear, and I'll cross their, sh their shirts that says DEA. And I get it thrown on the floor, butt naked. I uh, went home with the girl last night before. She screams. I'm very confused, still pretty drunk. So I get thrown on the floor and I'm butt naked, and I get arrested for selling drugs by the DEA. It came through my window. Um, so that was my first experience as an entrepreneur. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, from there, like I figured out, like, you know, I, I, I graduated high school with a 4.4. Um, and then I was like, wow, like, how did I get, you know, how am I here, like arrested by the DEA? Uh, like what happened, you know? So I really got to, to reflect back on that. And I, I really like uh, the memory just flashed in my head to where when I was in kindergarten, I had an experience where I, they were playing a game, learning everyone's name, and I just couldn't say my name. And I just, that memory just flashed in my mind. And I realized that at that point, like I unconsciously chose to become a high achiever. I was always trying to overcompensate for, you know, for my stutter and all these other things. And so I realized that, wow, like I didn't have everything figured out uh, as a 19 year old that, that I thought I did. So I went to my first seminar and that's where like a big trajectory shift happened for me to where I saw, wow, like there's a really powerful experience. I learned all about limiting beliefs. I learned all about mindset and how important, you know, breakthroughs are and the way that we view ourselves and the stories that we tell ourselves. And I realized that it wasn't my starter that needed to change. It was my story around it. And our stories that we tell ourselves is the story that really creates our life and our results. So at that point, like I really like it landed for me of, wow, like I can throw events and experiences that not just get people really drunk and hammered and have a good time, but to really throw them to really help people make a big decision to change their life or to help them, you know, to make a big decision in whatever area of their life is, whether it's their health, their business, their, their finances, whatever it is. So that's how I really got, that's the, like the origin of where it landed. And then for the past um, 10, almost 11 years now, I've been helping coaches, experts to really, uh, really put on events that are really powerful, uh, but also super profitable too. Um, and it didn't start out that way. I've done so many things wrong in the event space of uh, putting the wrong people in the room, investing way too much money on the front end where events actually cost, where events actually cost you money rather than make you money. 
And I've also done it to where I'm doing all the work where I put all the people in the room, I spend all the money on the hotel uh, or for the venue, and then I have other speakers come in and they sell and take away all the clients and I, they make all the money and I don't. So I've done so many things wrong. And uh, now where we're at is uh, we, at every event that we do, if it's a smaller event, we do six figures. Um, if we're doing a larger size events, you know, my events are 100, 100, 130, 150 people. Uh, we do high six figures with those. Um, we're helping our clients like you, Andrew, really, you know, like stand on our shoulders to where like, I've never done a seven figure event myself. I've helped a lot of people do it, but that, that's why I do what I do. You know, like I'm, I'm to support you and to really, you know, leveraging all your assets of what you've built with your Facebook group to really, really be able to create more connection with your tribe to bring them in person, to get them out from behind their computers, which I believe in this day and age in 2020, it's the biggest opportunity that we have is to bring people from online with all these amazing technologies that we have to bring them offline, to create connection, to create breakthrough, real transformation for them, and also really help them create uh, programs that are gonna help their clients longer term rather than just like a 30 day course. So um, that's a little bit about why, what I do, what I do. Um, and I'm so grateful to be doing it. And I'm so grateful to have clients like you, Andrew, who take what we do and to be able to really um, use it in a way where you, you're getting bigger and better results in myself. Like I learned, obviously learned a, a lot from what I've taught you, but I've also learned a lot from coaching you. And I think that's another like coaching secret that I'll share is that like to work with people who fucking inspire you, like work with people who stretch you, you know, like it's something that I believe that most coaches don't do. They only think that they can work with someone who's like at a lower, lower level than they are. Um, and I think that one of the best things that I've ever done for my business is work with people who really inspire me. Totally. And the reason why I actually got started throwing events was because of you. And it was Congruent Coach Live, where I had such a transformation at that event um, that was like, I need to do this for other people. Um, and that was really cool. Um, and I had been throwing masterminds beforehand, but I have, hadn't been making them profitable. So the question that I want to jump into that I get a lot um, from my clients and, and people in this Facebook group is if I want to throw my first event, where should I start? And let's say this is an entrepreneur that has a fair amount of clients, uh, maybe a few dozen, uh, and is looking to bring them all together uh, in, in, in event format. So where should that person start? Yeah. So I think the first place to start is like what I've discovered is you already have the assets available to you to your, to do your first event. So if you have a handful of clients, if you've been producing results for your clients for a while now, just getting them from just a one-on-one -on -one coaching relationship or from your online courses or in your group programs into a room, it's a different vehicle. So it's a different level of value and delivery and access that you're offering them. So I think a big mistake that I want to start with before I get into where to start is that is their mindset around it. They think that they need to do like ads or they need to like do some crazy new marketing strategy to get them in a room when in reality, like, and you know, I know a big, a big strategy that you use and that I use Andrew is just reach out, just invite like personal invite. You know, like events are based around human connection. So why not craft your marketing to be based around human connection, right? So mm -hmm. uh, that's the first piece. And where to start is definitely there around the mindset around like what's the strategy to actually get them there and the personal touch, the personal invite, really important. And then also is just really, really looking at what type of event do you want to really do? So I'm a huge fan of small events. You know, my event, Small Events Big Profit, that's coming up here in a couple of weeks. And that small event model is where I suggest that people start. You know, just like with you, Andrew, you know, you started a 10 person mastermind, you did 105 mm -hmm. grand, you know, the second one, like 45 days after 18 people, 165 grand, and then you went into your big event and did, 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 uh, did, did over a million dollars, right? So mm -hmm. I think those building blocks are important where you also, you don't have to spend a lot of money. So where to start is to look at, you know, how do I put six, 10 people in a room? Like my first event had seven people and I, I literally begged for those seven people to my friends to come to it, you know, so it had to have three people there. Um, and my first event, I did 70 grand at, right? So you don't need a lot of people. So where to start um, to really dial it back is one, get your mindset right. Uh, number two is to look at, you know, who, who do you want to invite to your event? And then number three would be to look at, okay, where, where do you want to do it? You know, do you want to do it in a hotel, which has its, its own benefits? You want to do it at an Airbnb, you want to do it at your house. But either way, I would suggest you want to keep your expenses down for your yeah. first one, you know, make it lean, make it lean and mean because they're coming for the value that you're going to deliver. They're not coming because you're going to do it in a huge mansion. You're not going to do it because you're doing it in a huge seminar room or you have like lights and DJs and stuff. Um, 
you, I'd really suggest that you really look at what is the experience that you want to come because people are coming, they'll fly from all over the world. You know, when your when your event promise is dialed in, so they're really clear on what they're going to get from that as well. Yeah, totally. And I totally agree with that. Before I hired you, I threw my first event just to throw it. And I think that is what everybody needs to just do is like your first event is going to be imperfect. You're going to freak the fuck out. You're going to think that nobody's going to show up, but you just do it. And then it will get better and better each time that you do it. Right. Um, And it was at the May mastermind that we did where we did 105. We kept it small. We had an Airbnb. I think our expenses, I flew my team in and I paid for all the food. So that got the expenses up, Mm -hmm. but really, I could have kept that event under like two, three K in expenses. Cause we were just at an Airbnb. And like, even if, if you have a good house, like you suggested, like just throw it at your house and like, just have people come in there and maybe your expenses are under a thousand dollars for lunch or something. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that, uh, May event was the first one that we did over six figures. We did a hundred and six thousand. And then at uh, the July mastermind, we had nine businesses come in and we converted eight of them and did $165,000. So yeah, the the live event model, just you get people in a room, you give them an amazing experience and they're just ready to buy. They're in the buying state. You've given them an amazing transformation, amazing week. Like at our events, we always make sure that people make money at our events. Uh, so that's, that's super helpful. Um, but, uh, what's, um, how do you cultivate that experience where people get this transformation and are also in the buying state in a buying window when it comes to the the pitch on the Mm -hmm. uh, second, third day? Totally. Totally. Um, Let's come back to that one. I just want to touch on a couple of things that you shared because I think it'd be okay. super valuable because when people think about events, I think about expenses and I really want this to be super valuable for your tribe. So yeah. I just want to break that down of like when you're thinking about expenses for an event, you want to look at, you know, really uh, a few things. Number one is the actual venue. So there's different prices in venue. If you do it in your house, it's there, there's no cost to the venue, right? Uh, you can do it at a, and you can do it at a hotel, Airbnb. Those are all a set of your costs. Number two uh, is your team. So if you have a team flying them in, there's expenses there. You know, what are you gonna compensate them for the event? Uh, you can also do an event where it's all volunteers. Like to Tony Robbins, his whole model is like all volunteers. Like if he had to have all those people on payroll, like he's saving tens of millions of dollars in expenses of payroll for all the volunteers that he has at his event. I didn't know that. Those are all volunteers. Oh, they're all volunteers, dude. They're 100% oh my volunteers. God, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So volunteers are, they're, they're really easy to source too. So this is, this is, you know, for everyone listening and also for you, Andrew, it's like, Hey, do you want to come be a part of the, 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 the tribe of buyers team for this live event? You know, like it, it's, it's a great for someone who follows you, who may not have the financial resources to invest, um, to, to invest in, in, in it right now, but they want to come, they want to help. They want to be a, a giver, you know, they could still want to be a value add. So that's a great way to source volunteers. Um, number three is food. Like, are you going to feed them? And to be clear, you don't have to, like you don't have to. Like when I first started out, I didn't do that. You know, but now it's like I would never feed my clients, you know, food that I wouldn't eat. And Andrew's been to my masterminds. Like we have like these like organic, uh, gluten free like uh, gummy bears and all sorts of crazy like uh, coconut milk ice cream that we feed our clients. You know, but I didn't start that way. Like literally, you can you don't have to like it's not expected. You know, it's not expected. Like people like when you go to an event, getting lunch and dinner on your own, like that's a normal thing. So I just want to like set that context is like you all get to choose. And if it's your first event, like you want to be clear on what the experience you're creating, but you also want to dial it in, be smart from a strategic, from a business perspective to where you, to where your expenses aren't going super high for your first event. So I just wanted to add that piece because I get a lot of questions around expenses and I want to just create some clarity uh, for, for your tribe. Yeah, totally. I love it. Um, and to piggyback on that, the venue with the, with the smaller events, like, I would keep the smaller events at an Airbnb or your house because the hotels can be a little bit tricky if you don't know what you're doing. Um, and I actually hired an event coordinator to uh, negotiate the contract and all of that. Mm-hmm. So just so everybody knows out there, like 
hotels can be tricky. There are a bunch of taxes uh, involved with hotels and all of that. So if you're hosting your first event, like Alex said, keep the first one small and build your way up. Um, and, it, and we both recommend like do it at, at, at your house, Airbnb, keep it small. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and then we had a question here yeah. about selling tickets to your event. So uh, being a smaller event, um, somebody asked if I charged for my masterminds. Um, yeah. So my, my thing is like, I want to break even. Uh, and, and Alex probably has a different uh, yeah. perspective around this, but I want to break even on the sales. And then um, uh, in terms of uh, what the event is actually going to cost us, I just want to break even. So ticket sales cost. And then um, on the back end, that's that's where we want to make our money. So it's about getting those people in the room, the most viable people that like are our ideal clients, and then making the money on the back end. So that's kind of how I think about like selling tickets to mm -hmm. the event. But a lot of your clients, Alex, have sold tickets for three k, five k, ten k for uh, the event. Um, so I'd love to hear your perspective yeah. around, uh, selling tickets for the actual event. Yeah, there's, uh, there's not one way to do things, right? <laughs> like it's, I think it's all around what's your strategy for it, right? Like there's, there's masterminds that I've ran where like, I have, I haven't charged anything, you know, and like now, like I, like hardly anybody ever comes to my events for, <laughs> uh, for free or, or on a comp ticket, usually some type of investment, but I've, I've done it really successfully to where like I'm strategic about who am I inviting for free mm -hmm. and then what does that process look like? So something that like I, that I, I've implemented where if I ever do something that's like more um, the invite only, you know, like like uh, I'm hosting a like invite only event tomorrow night that you're coming to, Andrew. Um, mm -hmm. And so for those who I don't know, like it's free, but I have them fill out like an application. Right. So it's it, it's a, it's more of a qualification process. So mm -hmm. you can do that if it's free. I would just like really like to go a little more more like meta with the mindset of when you're thinking about ticket prices, like rather than and I'm just a huge fan of quality over quantity. Like it's not how many people can I get in the room. It's like how many of the right people can I get? Because I'd rather have four of the right people than have 20 or 25 of people who, who are not the right fit. So mm -hmm. I think about it from that perspective. And then I also think of like ticket price as a filtration system. Uh, for the quality of client who I want to attract in. Like my small events, big profits. And it's also, it's a filtration system. And it's also what is your marketing and what is your sales strategy? Like, cause if your ticket prices are going to be two to 10 grand, that's usually going to happen over with a phone. But if it's, you know, less than two grand, depending on how good your marketing is, you know, then you can sell it through a sales page or over messenger, right? So there's a lot mm -hmm. that goes into it. I would suggest for your first event, just getting the right people there, whether it's, yeah. you know, it's, it's, the right person and you comp them or if they invest you know a, a nominal amount three three hundred five hundred a thousand bucks like i think it's really it's not a one size fits all it's also going into what is your strategy for really bringing them in and i would definitely suggest that you have them that them invested so whether that's like a that's a dollar amount or if you're going to do a free model it works you just i would highly suggest that like they fill out an application or there's some type of qualification process for that totally I love the point that you brought up. That's the quality of people in your room. It's not the amount of people in the room. And I think one thing that we did for Tribe Buyers Live that worked really fucking well was we created a list of 100 people that we wanted in the room that were our top prospects that would be our ideal clients. Mm -hmm. And then we made sure to reach out to them uh, personally via Messenger. And we actually sold 142 tickets just through Facebook Messenger. And quite a few were from that list. And the how we opened up that conversation is that we made sure we posted a shit ton on my personal wall and in the Facebook group. So I know that they saw at least one post on the event. And mm -hmm. then I just entered in Messenger uh, saying, hey, have you considered coming to Tribe Buyers Live? And that opening kind of just gave us a yes or no answer. Like it worked really freaking well. Uh, yeah, yeah, I just want to touch on a point there because it's so it's so good what you did. And I think a lot of people miss this of like whether they say yes or no, that's great. Like it opens up the conversation. You know, if they say yes, it's like great. Then you can take it from there. If they say no, then it's, there's an opportunity to really like to share with them what the event's about, what the benefits are, why you think they're a fit. 
you know, I think that so many people missed uh, when they say, no, I haven't, I considered it. Like they, they consider that like a no, you know, like I don't, I believe that I, so I just want to just touch on that point. Cause I think why you guys did so well and why you crushed it is because, you know, well, one, your freaking team is amazing, but two, it's like wh whatever comes, like when you ask a question like that, cause I'm going to go back into the strategy, right? It's like, when you ask a question like that, whether they say yes or whether they say no, they're both the, the right answers, you know? So you can both yeah. take those to a sale. So I just wanted to point that out. Cause I think <laughs> that's, it's a, such a good question, you know? Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Um, so your event, Congruent Coach Live, I went there thinking, I'm, I know, I know I'm going to be pitched, but I, I'm not going to fuck by. Like, no way. Like, I have no interest. It's not going to happen. I had so much resistance going into it. Um, and I ended up buying like multiple five figure investment. Uh, so happy that I did. Um, but how, my question is, how did you get me to that point totally. where I'm like, fuck Alex, here's my credit card. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I mean, I just come from, I come from the space in sales of like when there's value people buy, you know, like, so I, in, in our, the way that we teach our sales process <laughs> congruent closing is it's not about, you know, like if you ask them the right questions, you know, and you pull out their pain enough that, that they will buy. Is there an element of that? Of course there is. And we come to from the frame of like, if there's not value on that call, the person doesn't buy and you don't deserve the sale. And I believe it's the same way at air live events where they should be massively transformational. Like, and I learned this model from one of my mentors, Lisa Sasevich, problem, solution, problem, solution. So there's the event promise of what someone's coming in for. Then there's the solution that you deliver on. And then, so you're, you're, you're delivering on that promise. And then, on that promise when you solve that problem opens up a whole new set of problems that your next offer is a solution for so give an example if you're a love and relationship coach say for men you're helping you're helping men with, with dating so the first problem is you know i can't get i don't get dates i don't have first i can't i can't get any dates so the offer can be like the the first the first date boot camp right the first date boot camp and then from there that what what's the, what's the whole the next set of problems you can't get a second date or I can't keep a relationship, right? Yeah. So the offer at the event is, you know, relationship mastery or whatever it is, right? So that that model of delivery is really important that you're delivering on what you say, you know, you're bringing them in with a promise and you're delivering on that. And when you do, that creates trust, that creates value, transformation, and there's always a next level for the next set of problems that comes in. So that's mm -hmm. like a bigger framework of like what you want to design your event around. And how you structure your sequence is you want to have a combination. I think one of the biggest mistakes or a combination of, of how you deliver the event. So I think so many people who are doing events, they, they, this is where they really mess it up is they're addicted to, to, to their PowerPoint slides. You know, like it's all just a lecture of content and it's so heady and it's so much information and it's just, it's overwhelming. And mm -hmm. so I believe, you know, in what was so cool to be at Tribe of Buyers Live with you and to see what you guys have done with taking my model and making it your own. And you incorporated it, what, what, what we do in your own way, which is awesome. And I think why you got such a great result mm -hmm. is the combination between content. Yes, so if you do slides, awesome. If you train on a whiteboard or a flip chart, great. Um, exercises, so you're actually giving them an experience, whether it's journaling, it's shares, it's group shares, shares on the mic, hot seat coaching, and experience. So mm -hmm. you want to really combine all of those models to where they're not just getting information, but they're having a breakthrough and transformation and they're verbalizing it and sharing it. If you're not like facilitating, I think facilitation is a huge part of events too. Like, hey, share with your partner. Hey, get in a group of three. Hey, you know, at your table, you know, discuss this. Like that part, I think it's it's such an easy thing to add in that so many people don't because they want to cram, you know, eight years of content into their 90 minute presentation like in it's just that just becomes overwhelming and they don't actually process the information so i think why why what happened to you and what happened to you know your clients at your event why they had an awesome experience and why they can why they said yes uh to you and to your higher end programs andrew and why my clients do and why you did with me is because there's so much value that's created at the event and when there's value people buy it's like great i've gotten so much value from this three days what would the next 12 months look like what would the ne next six months look like you know, and that's pretty much how I make my offers, how I, I've, you know, I've, I've to train you to make your offer. It's like, mm -hmm. hey, have you met amazing people? What would your life look like if you had this type of support for the next year? 
great. But that's what the offer is. Like, it's very like invitational. It's not high pressure at all. It's like, hey, like if you've gotten value, this is exactly what you can expect for the next year. You know, so I'm a big fan of like building that trust, delivering on what you say you're going to do. And then just offering the invitation of, hey, if you're the high achiever that wants higher support and you don't want to do it on your own, you don't want to make make the same mistakes in X, Y, Z area, then here's what the offer is. So I think that's really in a nutshell, I did my best to condense it into like really what makes your event to be really impactful, really transformational, delivering on exactly what you say and also sets up your offer to really set up for the highest uh, profitability as well. Totally. I love it. There's one thing that I want to add there. Too. Yeah, yeah. You provided amazing freaking value. I think what really got me was on day one, the where you playing small exercise. Yeah. If you, if yeah. you haven't done that, I, I know you you're, like that one. You're gonna have to go to either Alex's event or my event. Um, because that that exercise really opened me up to a lot of where I was playing small and like helped me identify holy shit, I could be doing way, way more. And that really created the gap for me where I said yes to your offer because I was mm. tired small right mm. um uh but that that it, it was a partner exercise and that really created the gap yes there was a lot of value in the training but the way that you created mm. the gap between uh where i currently was to where i wanted to go was just so awesome and so brilliant that's why i kind of infused it into my own event totally well um and actually took that exercise from you um, and, uh, and it helped other people open up and, and say yes to themselves. Um, but that, that, that was the thing that really fucking hit me. And I think that got my credit card out. Right? <laughs> yeah. Well, let me just touch on that for a moment. Cause I want to give, um, just like, this is, this is, this is like all the shit that I've learned over doing this stuff for 10 years. You know, it's mm -hmm. like sales, it, there's an art and then there's a science to it. There's a cadence. So your sales call will will follow a cadence, right? Like there'll be a point of connection and then they'll go into their vision and then their challenge. Then you bring them back up, then you make the offer, right? So your events are the same way. So on day one, you know, why I suggest, you know, what we've built into your strategy and the way that I do it and the way that I, I would suggest whether you work with Andrew or with me or with anyone, like I suggest you do this for your events. You want to get them clear on where they're at, you know, on day one, like uh, Keith Cunningham, which I know that uh, we've, we were jamming on his book. He's Oh my goodness. He is a genius. Like, um, he says that most entrepreneurs never get to where they're going because they're not really honest with themselves about where they're at. Mm -hmm. So he gives an example of like Google maps, like this amazing, this amazing thing that we have on our phones that we can tell us anywhere of where we're going to go. He goes, why it's so good about telling you where you're at because Google maps knows exactly or where you want to go is because it knows exactly where you are, are right now. And most entrepreneurs are fucking delusional about where they're at right now. So a process like that of where are you playing small, you know, what's not working, like really getting them into that experience is really powerful, not just from a sales perspective, but from a value perspective of getting them really honest about where they're at. And that's why events are so powerful to bring people in a room where they can be honest and vulnerable and open to go through an experience like that with others, with, with others as well. And it doesn't have to be, you know, Andrew and I both train on business. It doesn't have to be in business. It can be on love and relationship. It can be on uh, fitness. It can be on, uh, on health and wellness. It can be on spirituality. You know, but when you put people in a room uh, when they're all going after the same thing, that's where the value is really provided where they can be more open and that creates more value. And then that also inspires the right people to say yes to what the offer is. Mm -hmm. I love that. Um, couple things. You brought up Keith Cunningham. If you guys out there don't have the book read less stupid, mm -hmm. like amazing book, uh, gives you amazing questions to ask yourself as an entrepreneur. Um, highly recommend it. Road less okay. stupid by Keith Cunningham. Um, and then I kind of want to dive deeper into the arc, um, mm -hmm. of, of events. Um, so what are some of the things that, you kind of went over briefly with connection and then um, also uh, uh, kind of motivating the crowd a little bit before the actual pitch. But could you go into a little bit deeper into the sequence of events throughout the throughout the event? Totally, totally. So there's like I said, there's an arc to your sales call, right? So that it's very similar to an event. So I, I the way that I train on it is I theme out each day. So uh, we train a three-day model. It's the best model in my experience to provide massive value and to also uh, to also enroll the right people into your programs. Two-day mm -hmm. events is by far the worst. It is the worst. It's mm -hmm. like from uh, if you're, if it's a strictly fulfillment event, it's okay. 
but it's still it's just not that much time like three days you have you have enough time for your audience to connect you have enough time to pr provide a massive value and you also give them enough time to make a decision on it, joining a higher level program so i definitely suggest three days not two so what i'm going to cover in the arc is on, on a three-day model so cool. you can make two days work it's just it's a more advanced if you don't have if you can't make a three-day model work you'll definitely have challenges making a two-day model work so we'll start with three mm -hmm. so the first day again is all around like vision so I theme that day around vision. So it's like there's an you you provide on day one of what's the overview of your methodology? What are they going to get you know throughout the event? But you want to go into like what is their vision for the aspect of their life that, that you are helping them with? So you it, that's definitely a part of of day one is getting them clear on where do they want to go because that is what, whether they buy from you or not. That's really important for the event of like what do they want to get out of it? That's it's just mm -hmm. important piece of the puzzle. So day one is all about it's a, a piece of it needs to be about vision. Where are they at? What's not working? Where are they blocked or stuck? Uh, mm -hmm. That's a huge part of it for me on day one. Uh, and this is more my style and it's a little advanced, but I want to share it because you can take it whatever your style is. Right. So I like to get people connected to why I want them there as soon as possible. So I go to a lot of events where they wait till like after lunch or you know, even the evening session of day one to really get into the meat of, of the content and really get people like present to why they're there. And mm -hmm. I just don't believe in that. Like, I believe that that's a waste of time. Like mm -hmm. people have invested in, in, in their, their time. They invested, you know, uh, their resources, their money into coming. And I take that very seriously. And so they're there. My perspective is they're there to get a breakthrough. They're there to have transformation that they're, they're there to work. Like they can get information anywhere else. They, they're coming into my room. Like we're there to help them provide as much value as possible in those three days. So mm -hmm. I want to get them there as soon as possible. Like, so I don't start my events with, Hey, you know, the bathrooms are down the hall over there and you know, lunch will be at this time. And you know, like this, this, and that, like, I, I don't do that. You know, when you came to congruent coach live, it's like, I played a really emotional video. You know, it was about, you know, it, our, my events are all themed. So it was superhero themed. It was a video about, you know, this amazing photographer that was taking these kids who had terminal illness and did this, a beautiful photo shoot with them and really like highlighted them as superheroes despite of all their challenges. Right. Mm -hmm. So I played a really emotional video to start. There's no opening. Hey, coach, coach, coach live. Hey, Alex Mosca. There was none of that. Like I played the video. I come on stage. I'm like, hey, let's talk about that video. Like in that brought up of like, we all have our own challenge. We all have our own limitations. You know, like I've had a stutter for all of my life, but you know, what are, who are we showing up with in spite of our challenges? What can we learn from these kids, you know, who literally have like, have these like really debilitating illnesses and diseases, but they're still like in high spirits. And what can we learn from that? How can we take that into our life? Right. Mm -hmm. So I want to bring them right, right where it's at or right where I want them in the sense of like, to get really honest about what is in their way. So I start my event like that. There's no open. There's a, like probably a hundred people in that room at Current Life who had no fucking idea who I was. But that's the way that I started, you know. Um, and so I just I'm a big fan of getting people there as quickly as possible. Then again, that's just my style. Um, I can facilitate that. I'm trained to facilitate that kind of stuff. Um, so that's just what I want to share. That's day one, right? So that's more mm -hmm. around vision. Where are they at? Where do they want to go? Obviously, there's a different piece of content in there, but I just want to give a big frame because we obviously in this live, we're not going to be able to go into all the details. Yeah. Uh, day two is around strategy. So day two is like, what is your methodology? What is your strategy that's going to help create a shift for them? Uh, you want to make your offer on day two after lunch. So there's a bunch of nuts and bolts strategy in there. There's giving them real value. Like that's just, again, like all of my trainings are when there's value, people buy. So if you yeah. don't create... I don't I don't yeah. want to skip over that. So you yeah. say the pitch after lunch on day two, right? Yep. Perfect. After lunch, day two, after lunch, that's when you want to make it. Um, and there's obviously a structure and a cadence and like a bit of a science to how you structure the offer, like what what the, what that um, what, what what you put into the presentation before the offer, all that stuff, right? But essentially, it's what is your roadmap to help get them from where they are to where they want to go? whether that's in business or in fitness or in relationships, spirituality, whatever that is, right? Mm -hmm. your, your six six essential pillars to to uh, ultimate spiritual growth, whatever it is, mm -hmm. right? So you wanna like give them what is the methodology of the, what they're not currently doing that sets up what you're offering. So that's day two. Day three is all around commitment and action. So mm -hmm. that splits, whether someone buys or not, it is really valuable, right? So that's all, it's stories around that, it's stories around uh, it's all, all your stories around that. And it, it, when you're training on content like that, it will help everyone in the room 
you know, take action on what they've learned at the event. It'll help the people who are thinking about joining your programs to get them off the fence to join, or it does a great job of helping people get off the fence to say no, because mm -hmm. at your event, you're not, you don't want to enroll everybody. You're like, you're, that's not what the outcome is. You don't want hundred percent yeses. You know, you're looking for the right people. And it's just in my 10 years of doing this, you, you don't get hundred percent. So mm -hmm. you want to have a clear plan where they're a yes or a no, where a no is fine. So that's why day three is all around commitment, all around action. And it's really helping them come up with a, sh a plan and a strategy to move forward after the event. And that plan and strategy could be with you and your program, or it could be a, a different path. So that's like, in a nutshell, uh, the, the like arc of what those <laughs> three days are about. I love that. Cause like when I threw my first mastermind event, if I had known that the structure would have been way, way better. So people that are watching right now, people that are watching the replay, go back to this, check that out. And if you're throwing your first event or you're looking to optimize your event, think about those three days and how you're going to set those up using these structures. Um, I So I'm excited about this. Kind of want to make a shift from the live event to the uh, actual offer yeah. um, at the event. Um, before I did Tribe Buyers Live, I talked to Steven Larson, if you know him. Um, he made a million dollars at his event. Uh, I talked to him on stage at Carrot Con and I was like, hey, I want to make a meal at uh, our event. What What's your suggestion? Um, and he said, he said one thing. He's like, sell something really expensive. <laughs> and I was like, cool, got that. I'm good. <laughs> um, so I'd love to dive into that. Um, the six month, nine month, 12 month masterminds that you help people set up. Um, going into uh, creating your first bigger, long offer. Um, how should, if people are creating their first like six month, nine month, 12 month offer, uh, how should they go into thinking about it? Where should they start? Totally. So I always go into like, what's the, what's the mindset around it first? So I, I believe that you can, help your clients produce bigger results when you're with them long term like rather than just being them with an eight week like group program imagine what you could do for them you know for the next six months or the work with you for the next year and so that's a big piece of the mindset of it of really like looking at how can you really help your clients longer term because there's the, the initial break that you can help them with right like when i first started my business it was all around sales so i was like okay i can help them get their first you know 20k plus client in 45 days but then after that, what's next, right? It's helping them get their offers even more dialed in, helping them with their marketing, helping them scale, helping them hire, all that stuff. So mm -hmm. you want to start to look at like, what is, what's the longer term outcome that they're looking for? And there is so much more value with staying with someone long term. Um, mm -hmm. So there's also a price people pay when they hop coaches. Like when someone goes and they work with, they work with you for eight weeks and they go work on another coach that's the same industry for another eight weeks. Like there's a cost to that because mm -hmm. that coach doesn't know what your blind spots are. You're also going to show up in that program the way that you want to show up, not in how the way that you want to be perceived, not based upon uh, how you actually are and operate. That's why there's a cost to when you change coaches. Mm -hmm. So that's all stuff that like, I would suggest that, that you speak to, and I have the experience in it. So it, it's, it's, that's just what my experience is. So that's what I share and it's really clean. And so I would suggest when you're thinking about a longer term offer is look at what is the bigger outcome for your current client? And what is next for them? I think a big part of where coaches mess up too and why we hire coaches is because our coaches see a vision for us that we may not be able to see yet. Like they see bigger possibilities. So when you're making an offer after a 90 day program to work with you for a year, if you're not telling them why, like why should they do it? Like what do you see as their coach? What possibility do you see for them? Right? Mm -hmm. Like if you're not doing that, then you're, you're leaving a huge amount of money on the table. So those are, that's all the mindset pieces. Um, and then I would suggest for actually structuring it is like six months to a year. I'm a big fan of year long programs because I believe one of the most valuable assets you can create as a coach or an expert is a long term committed client group who stays with you year after year and invests year after year after year with you. And that community is something that will never be affected by the algorithm uh, or the ads platform or if your ads account gets shut down, any of that. So I'm a big fan of creating long term containers because it also just attracts a, a better client. It attracts mm -hmm. a higher level client, like who is committed to their outcome for the year, not just for those 60 days where they like need to get the result in 60 days. So mm -hmm. it just attracts a higher level person in that as well. So um, anything that I can sharpen there, Andrew, any like, any like specifics on how, how, to, how to create the offer? 
No, I, I love that. I love what you brought up about um, not hopping coaches, how that dramatically affects uh, people's uh, bottom line in their business and also just like how they're operating and having to switch so much causes uh, your coach not really to get to know you and really how you work and how you operate. Um, and uh, on top of that, uh, for me, moving to a year-long uh, mastermind, that made my business feel more of a business and less of a hustle. So mm -hmm. that allowed me to bring in monthly recurring revenue for 12 months instead of just three months for my three-month program. Mm -hmm. And that was amazing. It gave me a breath of fresh air. I'm not starting from zero every single month. We have a little over ninety thousand dollars on monthly recurring revenue coming in for the next uh, next nine months now, which is incredible. Mm -hmm. um, and that was the big benefit, not not just to my clients, but to me as a business owner, bringing in that monthly recurring revenue just gives yourself a huge breath of fresh air um, because you're not starting from zero every single month. So I wanted to speak to that as well. Totally. Yeah, it's a huge one, you know, and it's also like if you do an event and also if you get a bunch of people who pay in full, you also can, even though it's not recurring, you can budget that out. So it is, you know, so yep. that's also that's a big lesson that I've learned, too. When I first started to launch bigger events where I'm doing, you know, half a million plus and it, like we get over half at once and I'm like, oh, my goodness, I've never had this much cash before. Uh, you definitely want to budget that out on a monthly basis. You know, it's not just, okay. OK, cool. We got, you know, we got three hundred thousand dollars cash. What are we going to do now? You know, like it's yeah. So that's a big one. Last time I learned a few years back of like, even when you get those big painfuls, you want to budget for what's next with that too. Yeah, and I want to add to that. I'm yeah. not a financial advisor, but put yeah, that me in a high interest yield count. Uh, like that's paying you at least 1.5 percent instead of just leaving it in some savings account that's paying like 0 0.01 or nothing. Uh, just want to add that to it. Um, but. Uh, uh, Guys, if you're getting uh, any amount of value out of this, smash the heart button, smash the like button. Um, I've gotten a lot out of this, so I appreciate you, Alex. Guys, if you have questions, drop them down below. Anything on live events, coaching, higher ticket programs, any of that. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'm trying to think of another question. I think... I hit all the questions that I want to hit. Is there anything that you want to add or something that you think we've missed during this interview? Anything like that? I'd say the the last piece is like, if you want to do an event, the, the, like the first step that I actually didn't touch on before is get your calendar and fucking set the date. Like that yeah. is, that is the best thing. Like if you're really committed to it, you know, put it, put it 75 to 120 days out, set the date, do, do an announcement on your social media. So you're, you're committed to it. That's, that's like a big piece of the puzzle where it actually makes it real. Mm -hmm. Like I can't even tell you how many transformation like I have when I'm coaching someone, I'm like, okay, get your calendar out and set the date. And they're like, oh. like it makes it real. So like if you have any inclination of doing an event, get out your calendar, set it, set, set the date. And it's just so it's real and make the announcement for it. I love it. And you have an event coming up in a couple of weeks. So if you want to dive deeper into yeah. events, really know how to make uh, six figures, um, in just a couple days, highly recommend attending Alex's event. Could you give him some uh, details on that? Totally. So small events, big profits. It's happening February 20th through the 22nd in San Diego. And it is our whole training on how to run highly impactful events for retreats with less than 30 people and walk away with multiple six figures in three days. And we go through everything from how do you fill the room with high caliber clients? So we give you all of our all of our swipe files from our, our different offer posts, our emails, our messenger sequences for how do we how do we enroll people into that. Uh, we give you our, our whole event structure where I touched on it briefly on this, but we go through how do you strategically sequence your content to set up your offer. So it's really powerful, really transformation for your clients. And then your clients will actually thank you for making the offer because it's the, that next uh, it's that next step that, ma that makes logical sense for them. And it doesn't feel icky or awkward or weird or anything like that as well. Cause I know that I've been to events where the offer feels fucking weird. <laughs> and so we were really, uh, we were really adamant about training on how to not do that. Uh, mm -hmm. We also go through what is the sales process for the event too. So whether you're by yourself, like for my first two events, my first event at 70 grand, my next event at 110 grand, 
I had no help, no volunteers. So I was the, the presenter. I, man, I managed the hotel. Um, I was the assistant. I did all the AV. I ran all the AV. Yeah, I see your face, Andrew. I, I did, did not know that. That's yeah, I did everything myself. So, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so I teach, like, if you're a one man or one woman show, you can do it. I've done it. Uh, mm -hmm. And how you, depending on what your team is, if you have a team there, if you have a sales team or a salesperson, how do you run that? What is the sales process for you? So we go through all of that to where it's really powerful. And then we also could go really deep into story because stories are what sell from stage. So we go deep into like, what are your stories uh, that, that you're going to, that you're going to make on day one, day two, day three, that really sets up your offer and is really uh, connected to your audience. And it's really authentic uh, to yourself as well. So those are just like some brief bullet points. It's our whole playbook. Uh, our intention is that our workbook alone is worth, you know, uh, $25,000 if you use it. So we are, we give you everything in that training. Um, and then, yes, as I've talked about here, there will obviously be an offer at the event. Um, and I think just coming, if you've done events before, or if you want to do events, I have a lot of people who invest just to see me make offers from stage. And so mm -hmm. I'm teaching uh, a, a, a segment two of the six, the six ways to congruently close from stage. Because I don't not agree at all with the five step system of how do you speak to sell from stage? I just don't agree with that. Like mm -hmm. if you are funny, you should sell the way that you're funny. If you're not funny, you should definitely not sell the way of someone who's funny. If you're introverted versus extroverted, like the way that I, mm -hmm. the, I, 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 I coach you to enter to sell from stage is very different than, you know, all, than my other clients that I, that I coached of how to sell from stage. So I give those different ways because my whole thing is the more that you can bring you and your personality into your events, into your marketing, into your business, that's what's going to attract the high level clientele that will invest with you at the higher dollar amounts and really create long term sustainability for your business. So if you are interested in coming, if any of this sounds good to you, uh, again, February 20th through the 22nd, you can shoot me a direct message. I'm doing a special offer for Andrew's group. Um, he's a dear friend. He's a client. Uh, he's a peer of mine. Like he's done bigger, bigger numbers than myself at my events. I'm so freaking proud of him. And I want to help you guys do the same. So if that's interesting to do, I'm doing 50% off tickets for you guys. Uh, the, the retail price is five grand. If you go to this site, it's five grand. If you message my team, it's five grand. Um, but if you come to, if you come and you say that you are from Andrew's group, if you're from the tribe of buyers community, if you're from the seven figure business scaling secrets group, I will give you 50% off. So rather than $5,000, you'll pay 2,500. Um, if you need a payment plan, we can split up into two payments of 1500 and we'll get you registered. All you have to do is send me a direct message. Uh, don't go to the sales page because you won't get that deal. Just send me a direct message. If you have any questions about how events may be a fit for you, or if you're on the fence, if it sounds good, but oh, maybe when should I do it? Uh, just send me a direct message. I will 100% tell you if it's not a fit. Um, mm -hmm. And I will 100% tell you if it is a fit. And I will, uh, and we can talk through what, what that looks like for you too. So I just wanted to make it a, a no brainer. I wanted to make it really valuable for you. And like, I, I want to acknowledge that $2,500 is still a significant investment. And so I want you to be significantly invested in your future, in your outcome. You heard what Andrew's results are. We have many, many clients who put six people in a room are doing $110,000 in sales. Uh, another client uh, is putting 10 people in the room doing $165,000 in sales. Um, we have uh, my, my client, Ben, who is doing, a, who has a client group like a, a $6,000 offer, but has never pitched a logger in the program. Uh, he put all those people in the room, 26 of them uh, did $394,000 um, just from those, those group of 26 clients. It's zero marketing for it. So mm -hmm. wherever you're at, events can be profitable for you. If you're ready to go, shoot me a message and we'll get you registered. If you have questions, shoot me a message and I'll help talk through whether it is a fit for you or not. I love it. I will be there. Uh, if you guys want to come see me, I'll be there. Say hi, yeah. take pictures, we'll jam out. Mm -hmm. um, I think what's really cool is, is the ticket price um, because everybody else there is investing more or the same amount as uh, everybody if, if you decide to take up on this offer. And those are the people that I want to be surrounded around, people that are investing uh, in themselves at that level. So um, guys, shoot Alex a, a, a note, um, especially if you're thinking about doing events, shoot him a message um and uh get that rock and roll and like alex is a super honest dude like he'll tell you no you're not ready for events or that's never gonna work so yeah yeah just one more thing uh that i wanted to share on that is uh well actually two number one is if you're considering like if you want to have a six-figure cash injection strategy uh in your business in 2020 i know the event's coming up soon i would invite you to be unreasonable 
Like if you want to do it, like I know that what it's like to be an entrepreneur, you can move your calendar. So if you want to talk through what that would look like, I'm happy to support you with it. And it's just something like this is an event we do once per year. So this is the opportunity. It's not false scarcity. It's just the reality if we do it once a year. So if you have questions about it, happy to talk through it with you. The other part is we throw the most epic parties in the industry. I'm very biased. Um, I love to throw parties and we throw a big party on the first night where I've rented, uh, I've rented music festival quality lasers in sound. And so me and my friends are going to, to be DJing at the party. It's going to be awesome and amazing uh, as well. So if you like to have, if you don't like to have fun, please don't come, please don't message me, please don't buy a ticket. Uh, <laughs> but if you like to have fun too and learn and connect with awesome people and learn some strategies of how you can add, you know, six and with Andrew's case, seven figure weekends to your strategy, shoot me a direct message and we'll go from there. That's awesome. That's all I got, man. Uh, we got a couple more questions. Are you done? Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Sweet. Uh, you are not Chad Thibodeau. Uh, so somebody is asking. I'm not Chad. Uh, this is, is this the same thing as Chad Thibodeau? Um, I think he has uh, a program that's named kind of similar to, to yours, but no, it's not the same thing as Chad. Uh, I'll just answer that one. Okay. Um, and then uh, the other question is, uh, what were your offers at the end of your event, Andrew? And uh, what is your recommendation for offer prices? So I will uh, share that. I, I want to give this to Alex. Yeah. What uh, What's your recommendation for offers at the end of the event? Do you offer multiple ones? Do you offer one? Yeah. Uh, price points, that sort of stuff. I, I always recommend offer two. Like there should be a, there should be one level and then like a, like say masterminds like a tainted word, but we'll just use that for example. So there's like mastermind and then mastermind plus. So that usually looks like long-term group program and long-term group program plus one-on-one -on -one access. So mm -hmm. I, I suggest two offers of a lot of people who don't teach it that way. I've just created, I mean, even looking at, at your results, Andrew, you know, like there's a, a big percentage of the revenue that comes from the higher level offer. So mm -hmm. I suggest two, uh, cause there will always be the overachiever the uh, the high performer who always wants to buy the like biggest and best thing that's the way that like that that's the way that I invest. Um, Andrew also invests in, in one of my highest level programs. So you always want to create an offer that speaks to that person, the one who's a, a quick start on the Colby, who's usually a star on the Wealth Dynamics, who takes action really quickly. Like that's someone who uh, who the higher level offers for, who wants results faster. Price mm -hmm. point, it's all relative, you know. Like it's I believe you know one of my mentors, um, Lindsay Wilson, asked the question of what can you tolerate receiving for your offers you know like what can you tolerate receiving because that's a big piece of it if like fifty thousand dollars if you if fifty thousand dollars for what you offer like scares the shit out of you then don't offer it at that price like you mm -hmm. will shake in your boots and it will not land and you won't make any sales so yeah. your price point it should stretch you it should feel expansive and it should scare you a little bit but it shouldn't be to the point where you're like really debilitated from it so a lot of people ask me what you should charge it's all relative like it's all relative to what do you want to charge for your offers? Like for me, my highest level consulting, it's it, it's it, it's over six figures uh, for my one-on-one -on -one support. And the reason why is because like I have levels of masterminds. Like I have levels of masterminds. I'm in the most incredible uh, relationship with my queen, Jen. I love spending time with my family. So my personal time, it's not like six figures because, oh, da 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 da. It's because it's taking time away from serving my top clients like Andrew and the rest of people in my accelerator program to the rest of my congruent coach collective, taking time away from Jen, taking time away from spending time with my mom, my dad. So mm -hmm. that time away from them is, is like, if I'm going to spend that personal time with them, it needs to be at a dollar amount where it makes sense. So mm -hmm. uh, when you start to grow uh, your different programs and your offers, you really get to learn of what is, what is your time really worth? And, you know, um, Ben Franklin once said time once lost can never be found again. So you really start to get of like when you're looking at in your business, when you're growing it and scaling it of where's your time being spent and not all time is created equal and what you invest your time in is really important. So when you're looking at your structure and your offers, you want to make sure that it's structured in a way where it's always based upon the value to the client. Like what is their perceived value? And then also what do you value your personal time at as well? Totally. I love that. And to answer, I, I'm sorry, I can't see this person's name. Um, uh, my offers, same structure, two different offers, multiple five figure investment. Um, and uh, yeah, worked out pretty well. Uh, <laughs> yes, it did. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think that is where we will wrap things up. Um, okay. 
Alex, uh, it looks like you have a call scheduled right yeah, now. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just, just a quick message. It's, 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 not, it's not a hard call. I just want to shoot him a message. Cool. Yeah. And uh, guys, um, Alex is hosting uh, small events, big profits, two weeks uh, from today. I will be there. Um, I'd love to see you guys there. Uh, if you would like a uh, discount on those tickets um, or just learn more about it, reach out to Alex with a personal message. Alex, if you wouldn't mind after this interview, just like write a comment down below so people can easily click on yep. your name. That would be awesome. Um, but Alex, thank you so much for being here. Is there anything that you want to add before? Yeah, we I'll on? just add, I mean, I've been marketing small vets big profits for the past couple of months and I, I'm like really proud of our marketing. So if, if you're considering it and you're not quite ready to have a conversation, you just click, 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 click on my personal profile, scroll. Like there's videos, there's text posts. There's so much value that we've pumped into it. Like there's, there's been some of our posts where people have been able to take those and create tens of thousands of dollars just from our organic free content. So mm -hmm. I, click on my profile, add me as a friend, go through my content. Um, as well, like whether if you wanted to come to a small for profits or not, like there's a bunch of value on there too. So I don't want to leave everyone out who just doesn't want to come or may not be able to make the investment or whatever it is. So if you want more value and if you really resonated with what I've shared, um, go to my profile and there's a bunch of content for you there as well. I love it. Alex, thanks so much, brother. Dude, thanks so much, man. It's a blast. You asked, dude, you're, you're a phenomenal on these interviews, man. I so appreciate your questions. You're great at what you do. Um, it really just shows of why you've created the business that you have, man. So thanks so much for, for having me on. I, I really appreciate you, brother. Thanks. Want to know the key? What's the key? No structure. I don't write down any questions. Yeah. <laughs> Just, uh, yeah. Uh, I think the key is though, is that like you're, you're genuinely interested in the people who you, who you talk to, you know, mm -hmm. and rather than like having this like eight part framework for how to be a great interviewer, you know, like you're, mm -hmm. you listen, like you're a great listener and you're, you're great at extracting the value. That's why you're also such, such a great coach and why you have the business that you do. So thanks so thanks, much. Bro. Dude, um, party on Thursday night at Swanson Profits. It's a white party, so make sure that you bring your uh, your your favorite white outfit, and we have glow stuff, all sorts of stuff too. So just want to let cool. you know that. Cool, man. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks so much for having me, brother. See you guys.